Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be exploding spark lines. So these are little mini trends that you can place into a matrix or a table that allow you to just show a trend of a particular measure over time. So we'll be exploring how you add these into your visualizations. And also, I'll go through some, some hints and tips and... Um, some ideas for how you could actually turn this table, this matrix here into this matrix here. Okay, so let's get started. The scenario that we've got is a matrix which has got a list of sites along the side here. And along the columns, we have got the number of work orders that are currently at a particular status within the, the work order process flow. So work orders waiting for risk review, work orders waiting for information, work orders that are waiting for planning, etc. So this is really just to give us an idea of if there's any bottlenecks in our process flow. Now, what is allowing us to, um, to, to generate the spark line or the trend is the fact that, if I just go into the data model here, every day we take a snapshot of all of the work orders that are currently open. Okay, and part of that snapshot is the status of each particular of that work order. So over time, we can we can identify how many work orders are currently on any particular day are at a particular status. Okay, so that's a data model. So we're going to be able to use the date table to create a, a, a timeline, and then we're going to count the number of work orders at each status over that timeline. And we're going to use a month in this example here. So let's go back to the, the matrix here. Um, that's pretty much it. Now we need to put a date range in here. Now in, in reality this date range would probably be relative. You'd want to look back the previous month, the previous 30 days or, or whatever. But because the data that I've got is from 2019, I've put a start and end date here of the, the 1st of March to the, the 31st of March. Okay, so I've started to build out this matrix and I've added the first measure here that we're interested in. So along the left hand side we've got the installations. Um, we've got this measure here, and I'm just going to talk you through this at, because it is a, a, bit, a bit of a learning here, particularly if you're dealing with tables that have got snapshots. Okay, we've got to be careful that we explicitly only ask for the most recent count of work orders. We don't want all of the work orders aggregated across all of the dates. So in here, we just want to see that um, those work orders which are waiting for risk review on the most recent date, which in this example here, because we've used this, um, this date range here, is the 31st. So let me show you what we've done with the, the measure to make sure that's the case. So the first thing I do is I go and find the max date across the work order variables table, which has been filtered for that date range between the 1st and the 31st of March. Yeah, March. Uh, and then we calculate the count of the number of rows, essentially. This is a work order key, so we're counting the number of rows in this work order variables table. But the table's been filtered for two things. The first thing is we want to only look at the work order variables um, records where this flag is true. So work order wait and risk review for greater than seven days. Now I'll leave a video below that explains how to set up these flags, or you can go and download the, the PBIX file, which um, I'll also leave a link below too. But essentially anything that has been waiting for risk review for greater than seven days will be flagged. So we want to count those. But we also want to filter only those work orders in the work orders variable table where the the date is equal to the max date that we've got here. Okay, so that's going to make sure that um, we're, going, we're going to also only get the maximum date in the current filter context. Now the current filter context for, for this one is provided by this date range here. So the max date range here is going to be the 31st. Okay, so that's the number of work orders that are sitting for alpha, waiting for risk review on the 31st, nine. And then for Bravo, it is one. Now for Charlie, it's zero. Um, however, it's, we've not explicitly told it to display a zero or to show items with no data. Okay, now I could, I could do that, but it still doesn't tell us it's zero. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to go back into this measure here, and I'm just going to add a zero to the end here. Okay. And we can see that is a zero. Okay, so the other measures are pretty much the same. We're counting the number of work orders at a particular status criteria, but we're also counting those work orders for the most recent date in the filter context that we've got here. 
So let's go and create a spark line for this one here. So to create a spark line, we right click on the, the value here, the, the, the measure here, and then add spark line. Simple as that. So there's two things we've got to to, um, to put in place first of all. Because we're using a measure, there's no summarization. That's all baked into the measure. Um, and it's a count of a number of rows in the work order variables value table. So that's fine. Um, we could choose to insert a spark line that isn't really related to this measure here, but it doesn't really make sense to in this, in this occasion. So we're just going to leave it as it is. It's defaulted in the measure. Um, so that's fine. And then we need an x-axis, which is typically going to be a date. In 99.9% .9 of the, the cases, we're going to see a trend over time. So we're going to go into the dates table and we're going to choose the date. And here we can see it's generated a spark line for this. So we can see that it starts off low and then there's a little bit of a, a bump here and then it kind of comes along and there's a little slight dip towards the end. Okay, so you can just get a general feel for how it is. Charlie starts at it's zero, and you can see as you hover on top of this, it does provide you with a bit of analysis. Now, you've no control over that as far as I can see, um, but this is telling us the ranges between zero and nine. This one here, uh, what's this telling us? It's telling us we've got a, a trend, a 200% increase over over this period here. So, the, you know, it's quite, it's quite useful to just add a little bit of extra information related to the, um, the spark line. Now there's some formatting you can do with the sparkling as well, so let's go and have a look at that. So here's the option under here. And let me just make this a little bit smaller here. Okay, so we once we've got multiple sparklings, we can actually go in and we can tell we can select a sparkling, but we've only got one at the moment. Um so the options, first of all you get a line. Now the default is a line, but you can do a column if you want. Which also looks pretty pretty cool. Um, I'm going to leave it as a line because I'm, I'm more interested here in seeing the overall trend. You can see the trend here. However, I'm going to leave it as a line. That's more going to be um, for other other types of measures that we're going to later on. So we'll leave that as a line. Um, we'll leave the color as it is, but you can change that color, and then you can change the width. Okay, so you can make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to leave it there because I just want it to be quite subtle. And then you can add these markers. Okay, so you can add a marker for every point, it's a bit too much, you can add the highest and the lowest. That's great, but the trouble with that is if you've got a lot of low points and a lot of high points, it kind of looks a little bit cluttered. Um, so I'm just going to leave it blank for just now. It's default to isolated, which doesn't seem to give us anything at the moment. I suspect that's probably going to be if there's one that's an outlier, you know, much bigger than, much smaller than the others. So this we'll come back to later on, but you can add them in. Um, you can add the last or the first, um, and, the, and then you can add a negative value if you want. So there's a lot of options here, which is great. Change the color, you can change the symbol, probably just leave it at a dot, which is more than sufficient. And then you can change the size of that that dot. So let's just add the first in here. So you can make it bigger or smaller. Okay, so not a lot of options, but some really good, useful options here that normally take um, a fair bit of DAX to build up if you want to put it into um, a, a mini graph or a mini chart. So that is the, the sparkling. It's fairly straightforward and adds a, a mini trend next to, or instead of, you could get that instead of um, adding in a number. So if you're just interested in un understanding how to set this up and add a sparkling, then that's pretty much today as much information as you're going to need. However, if you're interested in the steps I went through to turn this fairly bland looking matrix into this one here, then watch on and I'll talk you through those steps. Okay, so step one is going to be to add in the the rest of the measures and the spark lines related to those measures. So we've got um, we've got all our, our work order status codes that we're interested in. Okay, so now we've got those added in. We can see that for each of the measures, we've got a little mini trend, these little mini spark lines here. Okay, so work orders waiting planning. We've got their work orders waiting scheduling, etc., etc. So great, we're starting to sort of see some some of this um, taking structure here. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is change the format to the default format. So if we go to this style presets in the visual, and we're going to change it to minimal. Okay, it just gives it a little bit more padding, and um, it just opens up a little bit and takes away the alternating rows here with a grey colour, because there's only three rows, so it doesn't really make sense to have that. So that's the next step. 
Okay, so after that, what I'm going to do is I've created some additional measures. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and I'm going to view heading. And we can see here that for each one of these, this value here is the latest value. Okay, so we've got the latest value, then we've got a trend. Now, what I want to do is build a little bit of a story. I want to show the first value, the trend, and then the latest value. So let me just go in and show you that measure, which is really, really similar to the other measure we counted. So we'll find the one for this one here, waiting risk review. So while in the previous one, I looked for the max date, I'm gonna, in this one, I'm gonna look for the min date and that's all that's different, okay? So we're gonna filter, cut out the same filters, but we're also only gonna filter for the min date and that's gonna give us the first, um, the number of work orders for each status at the, the first date in the snapshot, in the filter that was snapshot filter we've, we've selected, which again in this case is the whole of March, um, and that's that's all it's going to do. Okay, so it's going to give us a number there. So I'm going to add that in to the table. Okay, and then I'm going to move this in the middle here. Okay, so what we've got now. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. Is we've got at the start we've got three, we've got a trend, and then we're, at the end of the period we've got nine. Okay, so that tells a little bit of a story. Now to help with that, we're going to go in and format the spark links because I want to highlight the start and end. Because I just think it makes it a little easier to read if you've got to highlight the start and the end and you've got these numbers next to it. So let's go in to our spark line, and now we've got multiple spark lines. You can see that there's an option to choose which one we want to format. So we're going to find the first one here, Work Orders Weight and Risk Review. And the line is fine. We're going to go to the marker. And I'm going to highlight the first and the last. And I'm just going to leave it as a default because that's quite that's quite nice. The size is, is, is fine there. Okay, so that is I'm going to do that for the other ones. And then we will go on to the next step. Okay, so we have now got these here. And... Um, I just noticed actually we need to put a zero on that one, so let's just make sure that this has got a zero added to it. So work orders, waiting, risk review first. And we just need to make sure that we add a zero into there. Okay. So, there we go. Right, so the next stage is for this to go and um, and make these titles a little bit more meaningful. Okay, there's quite a lot of words in here and it's kind of, there's too much information, it's, you can't take it in. So I'm gonna go and this is gonna be the sort of format we're gonna have. So the first one is just gonna be a dash. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the actual um, column title for the um, for the spark line to be the title for that, that, that particular section okay so we're going to think about these as being sections the section can the section has got the first measure that tells you the first date it's got the spark line and then it's got the last measure that tells you the, the current date the, the number that the current date so we're going to give it a work orders waiting risk review and we're just going to call it work orders waiting risk review okay and the final one is going to be to go and put a dash in here Okay, so it's made it a little bit clearer to begin with. Now, there's a few bit, other bits we're going to do. The first one is just a, a little bit on the, the alignment of the, the header and the actual values here. So let's go into our visual. And we're going to go to this specific column. And we can see here that we've got options to set the for any specific column we want. Now, we're going to have to make sure, luckily, these are listed in the order they're displayed in the column so even though we've got these dashes here we can still reconcile it back to a column in here so that's great so let's start off with the first one i'm going to click on that one there and i want it to be apply to header on i want apply to subtotals on i want apply to total to be on and i'm going to justify it to the the right okay so we can see here that was already justified to the right so it's right close to this the starting point here uh, this one here is going to be the spark line. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to again center that. 
So I'm going to apply it to the header and I'm also going to apply it to total even though we don't have totals in here. Um, but yeah, that's going to be in the center there, so it's fine. Now, then we've got the one on the, the right hand side, this dash here. I'm going to switch these on again because I want everything to be formatted exactly the same. And I'm going to format it to the left. Okay, so it's tightened it right up. So we've got three at the start of the period, nine at the, the end of the period, and here's the 20th, which has been slightly up with a little dip towards the end. So the next thing I'm going to do, and that is just resize these, and that's going to allow us to get everything on one page. Okay, so all of these titles are going to be changed, but I'm going to just format this one here. So um, I want to get a color. So I want to use, rather than use different colors for each row, I want to use different colors for each column. Okay, like a color banding. So let's go back in here, make sure I've got the first one selected, and I'm going to go into this background color here, and I'm going to choose this background color that I've, um, that I've been using before. Um, and I'm just going to do it for each one of these. Okay, and I'm going to do that opposing so now it looks like a section okay because it's got the same color it looks like a section and i'm going to do the same i'm going to leave this one as white and i'm going to do the same for one same for um weight and planning i'm going to make it that blue background okay so let's um pause this and i'm going to go away and um and format the rest of these okay so i've now gone and i've got this alternating columns look by just um by just formatting each one of these columns um like i did with the first one I made sure that the um, the numbers are are right or left justified depending on whether they're the start or the end of that trend. So I think that's looking a lot better. Just a couple of fi finishing touches. The first one I'd like to do is just bold these headers here. So let's go and look at uh, the column headers, and then we'll put this up bold. And then just pop a little bit there. Um, then I'm going to go and add a title. So let's go into general title, turn it on, work order status analysis. And then finally, I like to add a, a bit of a drop shadow. So let's go in here to general effects, and then we'll turn the shadow on. And the default is fine. Okay, so I think that's looking a lot better. If we go and look at the previous one and just, um, just show them side by side. You can see what a difference just have, some basic formatting has done, just to um, just to make it a lot easier to read and make your dashboards look a lot um, a lot nicer on first impression. Okay, now it's not just about making things look nice; they need to be functional as well. But I think adding these little um, these little dots here just helps to focus the mind and, and focus the attention on the start and end, and just gives that trend a little bit more emphasis. So hopefully you found this useful, and um, if you like the video. It's always appreciated if you could give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep up to date and get a notification whenever I release a new video, which is about once every every week, then press the subscribe button and press the wee notification bell. Apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.